here up on the screen. Uh, I appreciate you taking the time, man, to uh, sit and talk with me. I appreciate you having me on, man. Awesome. So, hey, we'll just dive right in. One, congratulations on your big victory on Friday night. How's it feel to get that win? Uh, thank you. Um, you know, it feels good um, to go out there and get the W. Um, you know, it feels especially good because um, I wasn't feeling my best out there. Um, I got I, I got sick last week. Um, it, it ended up making a weight cut hard on Thursday, and then uh, Friday was tough in the back, warming up. I had cold sweats. Stomach was killing me. Um, you had to still go out there and, you know, perform pretty well. Um, not up to my standards, but to go out there and get the win and the finish was really good. Um, yeah, like I said, I wasn't happy with my performance. Um, I haven't gotten to see the fight yet, but I know how I felt in there, and it, I didn't feel myself, so I was glad to get the win and get, get out, but I would have liked to have performed better. Uh, no, no, you you sound pretty upset and beating up yourself, but you walked away with a finish in the third round. I know it was a little later than you probably wanted, but it's a finish. Uh, adds to your tally. Now you're at eight finishes, I believe, and improves your record at eleven three. And uh, you're four and one or three and one, excuse me, in the LFA. Uh, you got to feel pretty good about that. You're walking around on a three or uh, two fight win streak now. Um, you know you got some big things coming up. What's next for you? What do you want next? Yeah, you know, absolutely. You know, um, you know, like you said, moved to eleven and three, and I've got nine finishes now, and three and one in LFA with three finishes. Um, so, you know, honestly, I would love to fight for the LFA belt. Um, that's that's something I've got my eyes set on. Um, you know, if if that's not next for them, um, you know, the the UFC contender series calls, I'm down for that. Um, UFC is coming to Chicago in June, and then they're more than likely coming to Milwaukee in September. Um, if they need some Midwest talent, I'm right here, and I'm ready to go. Um, been seeing some of the 45ers that have gotten to call up lately. I, I don't think that they're as good as I am, but, hey, they, they're doing their thing. They made it. I'm um, happy for them, but I, I'd be happy to come in and Send them right back out. <laughs> <laughs> now, like you're talking about that, does that do you get a little frustrated knowing that you know you fought at one of the premier promotions in the region in Milwaukee at NAFC, and then you you caged aggression, and then now LFA, who's put you know last night at UFC they put 29 percent of the fighters on the card, talking about Ortega, um, O'Malley, Dern, um, and then like what does that mean to you, like? Uh, do you believe you deserve that shot? Yeah, uh, I think I think I do. Um, you know, I think there's a couple other guys on our team that deserve it as well. Um, yeah, I think a lot of the guys down here at Rufus Ford are ready to go. Um, we've got a we got a room full of killers, man. We're all ready to uh, mix it up with the best in the world. But like you said, you know, LFA sends the most people to the UFC, so I'm in the right spot. Um, just gotta wait for my my chance. Def definitely, definitely. Um, so um, you're talking about the contender series. Um, you possibly the UFC is coming into town. LFA belt. Um, who? who um, how do you, how do you go about training? Because you come from one of the premier gyms and probably all of MMA at Rufus Sport. You got you know the list goes on with the amount of guys you train with. What does it mean to you and to have a gym like that and a supporting cast? Uh, it means everything. Um, our team is, uh, you know, so close knit. Um, it's not like one of, you know, like there's other teams that have more guys in the UFC, but the guys don't live uh, there at all. Like they travel there for their fight camps and then they leave. Um, we've got a couple guys that come in and do their fight camps by us, but the majority of the team lives right here in Wisconsin. So, so we're there right away. Um, you know, like I'll probably take most of this week off to just kind of heal up a little bit, but I'll be right back in the gym. Um, you know, Paul Felder, Anthony Pettis got big fights coming up April 7th that I want to help out with. Um, Emmanuel Sanchez is a huge fight April 28th that, um, 
down there, co-main event for Bellator in Chicago. So I'll be helping out with him. Craig Eckelberg has a fight coming up soon. Um, you know, the list goes on. There's, there's a lot of guys fighting real quick. So I just want to get right back in the gym and help these guys get ready. Definitely, definitely. You're talking about your teammates, Paul Felder, who's got a big fight coming up against actually a Long Island guy from my neck of the woods. Um, tell us a little bit about fighting with your teammates. Last night, uh, Friday night, you fought with uh, your teammate Jordan Griffin. Among I know you had another teammate as well on the card. Um, yeah. What's it like, like having your teammates on your side and on the card with you? Honestly, I've had that uh, luxury the last couple fights to have at least uh, one or two teammates fighting each time. You know, this time there was three of us fighting. Um, it, it's nice because then, you know, like if, you know, those last couple pounds that you got to shed off before weighing in, somebody's there to help you out and be in there with you. Um, even just being at weigh-ins, you know, there's a, there's a bunch of other fighters around from other teams, you know, your opponents, mean mugging you from across the room sometimes <laughs> it's nice to have um you know people there in your corner ready um with you so it's it's nice and it's really nice when you all get victories um you know because then we can just get to feed off each other's energy and keep keep the night moving uh smoothly you know zach plus us started it off with a first round sub um to start the night out for LFA. Um, it was on the undercard because he's an amateur, but you know that that brought a lot of energy back into the locker room and ready to go. Yeah, you got, uh, the three of you guys had a clean sweep in submissions uh, Friday night. I know Jordan had kind yeah. of a comeback uh, win with a bit of sneaking an arm bar and finishing off his opponent. Um, so let's speak about, I guess, your submissions. You, you have eight submissions. You're out of your uh, 11 fights, only one KO and only two fights gone to decision. How important do you believe that is in order to like longevity in your career? You already have fourteen fights. Yeah, um, they actually have that messed up online, and I don't know how I got there, but uh, I actually have nine subs. Oh, okay. Uh, and no KOs. Um, but yeah, you know, I, I like subbing people. Um, you, know, I, I thought I was going to get the knockout this time, but man, John Deval was tough. Um, you know, he took, I, I landed a really nice right hand and I think it was the second round. And then to be honest, I got on top and, and even though I was sick, I was dropping some brutal elbows from his guard. Um, and he was just taking them off the dome and <laughs> still fighting. Um, so yeah, you know, I, I like getting the sub though. Um, I, I feel like the sub is a little sweeter to me just because, uh, you know, a, a knockout happens. It's your body naturally shutting down. Um, that's, uh, that's under your own will that you quit. So I, I think they're a little sweeter. But, uh, you know, the fans really like to see the knockouts, so I can't wait to start getting some of those too. I've been working. Uh, <laughs> been working a lot of pads lately with my, with my boy Scott Cushman um, and Joe Nichols, and, and we're cracking them. The knockouts will come. They're just uh, not quite here yet. Definitely, definitely. And I, I, I remember watching uh, your interview with uh, James Lynch, and you were talking about how you believed your wrestling was better, and um, you, you believed the grappling game was going to be your edge, and it seemed like it came to that. Um, what makes you so confident in like your submission game and in your grappling game compared to some of these other guys who, you know, they come from a lot of jujitsu background, but you guys walking in there and just choking them all out. Um, you know, it's just, it's different. You know, um, my opponent is, is a brown belt jujitsu and, and all respect to him. Um, and I'm only a purple belt, but we don't, we don't take our belts in there. Um, you know, this is an IBJJF. Like I don't have to only go against purple belts now. Um, it doesn't matter. Yeah. I've been in there. I mixed it up with a black belt before who, uh, you know, couldn't submit me even though he had a couple deep, deep subs. Um, you know, I just, I guess the whole MMA aspect of it is, is what changes it for me. Um, I think, I think when I can start hitting you and you got to start worrying about my long arms with my elbows, then I can sneak in chokes a little easier sometimes. Um, you know, you just got to worry about other things and then I'm sneaking it in there. 
Um, you know, the triangle came because he tried to pass my guard and he, he left his uh, elbow in there. And the moment I seen it, I was like, I'm a triangle I'm right now. <laughs> popped it, popped his arm in there and I put that triangle up. And, uh, you know, I, it, it was all over from there. I mean, it, it, it didn't take long once I had that thing uh, wrapped up that he was stepping up. De definitely. Uh, now we met, we talked about earlier and briefly discussed um, about your next, uh, whether opponent, whoever it may be, depending on what promotion, wherever it may be. Um, when you see guys like Sean O'Malley, who's very like outspoken, wild, kind of all over the place, does it kind of make you want to, I guess, step out of the realm of kind of who you are and kind of act kind of a little crazy like some of these guys? And just, just, Rufus Sport, like I've said, you guys have a stable of talented fighters, but you're all very humble and, I guess, quieter. So maybe sometimes, like, the recognition, like, the, I, from the, I guess, from the basic fan base doesn't no, usually uh, find you guys, but, like, the real, real fans, I believe, know you guys are there. Like, do you think you have to change who you are a little or no? No, I don't think I have to. Um, you know, some people, um, they have called me cocky before. Um, I, I don't really think I am. I think I'm very confident um, in my skills. And, uh, you know, I got a more of a quiet sense of confidence with it. Um, like, w when you start talking to me, like, yeah, I think I'm going to win every fight. Um, and, you know, a lot of you know, some people might take it disrespectful. Like, um, when I was talking about the John Duvall fight, some people were like, yeah, you know, you he like says he respects him, but then says he's going to beat him everywhere. And it's like, well, what do you want me to say that, <laughs> that I think he's going to beat me? Like I'm, I'm, I'm not going in the cage thinking that my opponent's going to beat me that, you know, you're already beat before you get in there then. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I mean, sometimes it's like, man, if I just talk all that crap, I'm going to get it bigger. It's like, I could do that, but that's not who I am. People are going to see that. So I just let my fights do the talking. Um, you know, like you said, I'm 11 and three. I've got nine finishes. I know what the hell I'm doing out there. Um, so I'll just keep doing it my way, and I'm gonna get the call eventually. And we'll put the I'm gonna put the division on notice once I get there. Definitely. Uh, well, Nate, I think I appreciate you taking the time to talk about your latest victory. And I uh, wish you the best of luck in the future fights. And uh, we hope to hear from you fighting in either the UFC uh, Contender Series or LFA uh, title fight. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. I hope it happens soon. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate you for jumping on. And uh, best of luck. Thank you. You as well. <laughs> And that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that was uh, Nate Jennerman, uh, LFA 34 uh, title fighter, or title fighter, excuse me, featherweight. Um, Nate just won his uh, fourth fight. Or th sorry. <laughs> Nate just won his third fight in LFA, fourth fight in LFA. He's 3 and 1. So a big win over John Duvall um, so for him. So congrats to Nate Jennerman. Uh, this is Carol's Corner MMA Podcast. I hope you guys enjoyed the interview. Uh, there's a lot more to talk about. I'm going to bring some other guests on this week uh, periodically. Sundays I'm going to try and do something every Sunday night. Get someone else on here with me to chat up a storm about sports, um, MMA, to talk about it all. So if you have questions, drop them below. But otherwise, uh, thanks for tuning in. And uh, we're going to peace out out of here. And I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, checking this out so have a good one